continues with Louise Whiteleg standing in Air and Michael, where she lives. She's 38, married, and a quality systems manager at Ramsey Baker, which means you've been up all night, doesn't it? Uh, well, it was a late night last night, yes. She's an independent candidate. Yes. Uh, good morning. Now, <clears throat> you're very active for Christian Aid. Indeed, uh, you're presenting a petition for redress of grievance. You did uh, do a Tim would try and push the government to give more overseas aid, the 0.7 uh, campaign. Yes. You, you feel that's important? There is a campaign on the island at the moment, yes, um, supporting international aid. I'm sure you've read the petition. We're asking the government um, to keep its promise that it made, which is a strong theme of my campaign, transparency, accountability, and doing what you say you're going to do. Uh, but is that what led you into standing for politics? Certainly part of it. The um, apathy on the island for politics and the way the government has acted on certain instances um, has made people feel um, they're not interested in politics anymore. I feel really, really strongly that it's not enough to stand on the sidelines and talk about it. You have to stand up for what you believe in. And I believe that we need to speak out when we see something that's wrong. You refer to a huge job the House of Keys faces in the next five years. Do you have enough in political experience to put your shoulder usefully to the wheel? Well, that's the interesting thing about general elections, isn't it? Everybody has the opportunity to put themselves forward and the public will decide whether... But only those who feel they can do a good job should Absolutely. really do it, shouldn't Absolutely. they? Absolutely, and I feel I can do a, do a good job. I feel I've got a, a vast range of experience, which is backed up by my education and qualifications. You're in Aaron Michael, where, of course, yes. it's fairly rural. Uh, you say you'll be asking constituents what they think the priorities are. Will you be guided by what they say, or will you be doing what you think is needed, just seeking their advice occasionally? Well, it's a bit of both with everything. You've got to achieve a balance between the two. I've been out and I've, I'm canvassing as we speak, and my manifesto is based on many of the th feedback that I'm receiving from the constituents. Well, let's have a look at some issues. Coastal erosion, yes. obviously, is a big, big issue, issue up there. How big, big an issue? I mean, do you, can you hold back nature? Oh, not at all. Not at all. Um, but with sensible planning, with looking at you've uh, maintained your drainage systems, maintained your riverways, there are things we can do in the short term, but there is also a long term plan that's required. Speeding vehicles. Uh, you've got the TT course going through up to yes, your constituency. Yes. Is that a, a, a problem outside, say, Kirk Michael, where well, it is obviously a problem? Well, the whole, the whole of the stretch on all of the main roads, some of them are used as, I shall say, long tail runs. So would you like to see them, the, the speed limits brought in and, and rigorously enforced? No, I think we need consistency in the approach. Um, th there's areas of the stretch where we do have the lights that flash up that tell you the speed that you're going, but there needs to be a consistent approach throughout the whole of the place. People live there. You have to reverse on and off your drive. It can be very dangerous. The pension fund, um, you say, is the biggest problem. You use this phrase, we can't keep kicking the can down the road because there's no road left. This is true. This that, is that true. That sounds like a disaster politics, doesn't mm. it? Have we reached the end? We've not reached the end. It's difficult with the constant cuts in interest rates that we suffer from the UK. Um, but we have to, we, we can't save trouble for tomorrow. We have to deal with the situation now. But how do we do it? Do we have to get really tough and make people say, you're going to have to get given less at the end of the day and contribute more? That's the only way. I think we need to close the pot. I think we need to have a defined contribution scheme. We do need to be uh, cognizant of issues surrounding retaining staff, uh, getting staff over for um, specialist industries such as medical and teaching. Um, but it's something we need to deal with now. We can't just keep passing it down the road every three years.